What up, headbangers? How you doing? I'm Rob O'Day, and welcome to the greasiest of all time. Today, we're chilling with I at last out of Finland. How are you guys doing? Oh, uh, hi. We're fine. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us how the band got together? Uh, oh, well, like, I can start. Uh, <laughs> like, at least by introducing myself. Well, uh, I'm Roberto. I play bass for I at last. And you guys are welcome to introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Henry. I'm, I'm the lead singer. And I'm Nico. I play drums. That's all. <laughs> How did you guys uh, all get together and start writing music? Uh, well, um, well, <laughs> well, it's the three of us. Oh, well, you, you go ahead. I, you get you, because your English, English is more better than mine, so <laughs> you, you can say. <laughs> okay, well, well uh, I can explain. Uh, so, uh, the three of us and uh, our guitarist, Robe, uh, we had a band since, like, I don't know, 2010 or something like that. Something well, like a that. really old band. Uh, this kind of basic, really, uh, well, really basic metalcore. And... Uh, well, eventually the kind of main songwriter and the driving force behind the band wanted to quit. So we then headed off like without him and started a new band and uh, got into contact with uh, our second guitarist, Juha. And yeah, now we're here. That's cool. So you guys have been together for a few years then. Uh, yeah, like like ten years. I'm yeah, sure. that's crazy. Um, yeah, that that is actually crazy. Now, yeah, that I, I think about mm, it. <laughs> yeah, most bands won't don't really last that long unless they're connected. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. yeah. Your latest single, "Wake," it's it's super fucking unique, and it's heavy as fuck, and I love it. Like, <laughs> are you the only vocalist, or are there multiple vocalists? Uh, I'm the only vocalist. At the moment, uh, all, uh, Juha uh, is starting to practice some background vocals as well to help me through the sh shows. So, Man. but but I'm I do the vocals. Goddamn, fuck! <laughs> Holy shit! Like you have such a unique range. Like your screams are gnarly as shit. But when you get that like clean that clean grittiness that's really high, like your high grits. Holy yeah. fuck, it's so cool to hear. Like, you guys go through this, this, this fucking heavy shit, and, brrr, and then all of a sudden it hits this like open spot. Like, you hit it like you're going through the forest and you open up into like this huge clearing, and then you're hitting these highs. And it's just like, it's cool. You, you almost get like an image of just like an open field with like birds flying and shit, just because it's so clear, crisp, and beautiful. And usually you don't see that. Out of from bands out of Finland, most times they're hard, brutal. So it's fucking yeah. so cool to see a different style. How did you guys come about creating it, and how was the recording of the last um, single? Uh, well, the high vocals guy kind of they just came to me that an idea that uh, when we. Uh, the other songs that we have made and Wake also, it just, when I heard, heard the songs, it just came to me that we need something high for those, for those parts. And uh, it took a lot of practice to get there and it still does. I'm still learning as we go. And I also would like to very much to improve my clean vocals uh, more, but we get to there. Perhaps later. <laughs> yeah, well, you definitely have it. I mean, it, it's always going to be a building thing as a singer too, right? Because yeah, yeah, it is. yeah, we can't just like, we have to constantly practice. We have to constantly warm up or we fuck ourselves over in the long run. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Um, your other your other song, I believe it's called Mother. Yeah. It's, it's super different too compared to Wake. Like I find yeah, you guys yeah. how you guys don't stick to just one style or like song structure you're like fuck it we'll do what we want how we want and it, it really comes out in your sound which is which is cool to hear yeah and I, I, well i like i like it as well that we have 
uh, wide vi 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 variety. <laughs> variety, <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. You can't even pronounce it, but but I, I really like that we have many different songs, and I also like to see that to be in the future as well. Do you, are, you guys, as, are you guys planning on putting out a full length, or are you just going to do singles? Well, well we have the, the two last singles are like promo singles for our EP, which is coming at the end of this month. Ooh, sick! That'd be nice. So there's two yeah. two unheard songs. Uh, three actually. Really? Yeah. yeah I so guess so. Yes, be because a... Mother was last year. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. So <laughs> there will be a lot more, a lot, lot more variety in song structures on the EP. So. Yeah, I'm excited for that because, like, yeah, I genuinely yeah. dig your guys' style. Like, you made another mm -hmm. fan. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, damn. Cool. As soon as I heard your guys' like, as soon as the submission came in, I heard it, I was like, yeah, yeah, they're getting put in my bag of music for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what's nice. uh, What's been your biggest setback so far in your guys' music career over the past 10 years? Well, I think it's easily to say Corona. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, because we are now in the situation where we should, should just uh, play many gigs as possible. So it's kind of a killer to us right now. But it gives us a moment to make new songs and practice more. Then when gigs come available again, we just rock the fuck out everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? And it's... Are you guys signed or are you, do you do all your own recording? Uh, we do our own recording, but uh, we had an external guy doing the mixing and another guy doing the mastering. Okay. Yeah. It, it's and, really well done. Yeah. That, that's cool. Oh, cool. So you guys are independent then? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah that's, it, it, it's kind of cool to see how many bands are independent and still putting out music at the level that the record labels are doing you know it's kind of like a, a spiteful fuck you to the industry because like we don't need them to be yeah. successful at this point that's true i mean because all the resources are available i mean the knowledge is in the internet in youtube videos for free completely free and like uh well recording equipment is really not that they're not that expensive nowadays mm -hmm. so it's totally in the it's totally possible. Yeah, I, nice. find, I find the hardest thing is marketing. Like yeah, getting yourself true. getting yourself yeah. out there without being able to perform is the hardest thing. Because trying to sell a product like music online versus selling it at a show is like mm -hmm. it's not even the same ballpark. It's not even the same sport. You know, you have to almost become um, a salesman, which is yeah. I never really had to have as a bit as a musician before because music sold itself. So now it's, it's, it's weird. The industry is so much different than 10 years ago. Mm, surely. Well, actually we, we do have this, we do have the uh, deal with like distribution and promotion. I mean, a real release deal, if you will, I don't know what the, what it's called mm. really, but with uh, inverse records, which is a uh, uh, Finnish, uh, I'm, I'm pretty Ooh. sure yeah i know i'm pretty sure um they contacted me and actually that's yeah, how yeah, i found they were the ones. Yes, yeah because yeah, i was like damn I, I like this and i get tons of submissions from them they're they're really cool mm. like they support pretty pretty hard hey mm. and they're out of finland uh yeah they are yeah cool how is the music scene in finland when COVID's not attacking everybody <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think, well, I don't know. I can't speak about the entire music scene at least, but um, well, the metal scene is, well, here, I mean, metal is such a big thing. It's been a big thing for such a long time. It's like almost main, mainstream. And My favorite bands from there, so. <laughs> oh, well, that's cool. Rest in yeah, peace, so... Alexi, so. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it, yeah, I mean, so there isn't, so this, there's not, there's not like this, you know, one specific scene that has uh, its own character, you know, it's like just many different little scenes and 
then there's like the big, big festivals, of course, which gather people from from all kinds of fan bases, you know. Yeah, no, for uh, sure. Can't really say. <laughs> is it um like are the bands are they tight with each other or is there how is like how are other bands when you guys put on shows like local shows? Well, I mean, we do know a lot of a lot of dudes in bands ourselves, you know. So kind of, I think maybe it goes a, a little by a little by by genre of music that when you like you come into contact, like arrange shows with bands that go well with your own music. Mm -hmm. So you get to get to know them, become friends, and so on. Yeah, yeah. So you guys, you, you'll, you'll tend to stick towards your own genre. Then you won't have. We have shows where like there's death metal and then you have like a prog band and like a punk band. Oh, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of like that too. Yeah. That's cool. Like it's, it's, it's kind of like that here. We have a, well, we used to have a really small tight knit scene, but we lost the one venue that actually allowed metal and they oh. were, uh, they were called Moonins and they were a Viking pub. So it was like, <laughs> hell yeah. Right. I could, I couldn't, mm -hmm. I could always go there and enjoy good music. Um, I'm on a Marth perform there. And, oh, uh, wow. yeah, and it's a tiny little venue, but, like, they somehow managed to get a lot of really good bands to come through. And now, now that they're shut down, it's it's a weird experience because there's not that, there's nowhere else that'll actually allow metal bands. At least not super heavy metal bands. Like, they'll get the, the heavier disturbed metal, kind of. I don't know. I don't really classify, like, that hard, hard rock as metal. But it's, uh, yeah, it's weird. It's, it's cool to hear about other scenes because especially from Europe or metal is embraced and it's not like, you know, it's, it's like here, it's scary. Like people are scared of metal in North America almost. It's weird. <laughs> what, uh, what's been your guys' biggest accomplishment so far? Uh, what was the, like the biggest festival you performed at? Oh, no, we haven't really played in festivals <laughs> yet so yeah. not well, but, Go ahead. Uh, well we are uh, taking part in this uh, band competition called Emergenza uh, which is now on break because, uh, due to corona so mm -hmm. I think uh, and we moved into finals on Finland's part and I think that that is so far the craziest. Well, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, how, how many good bands are in Finland? So many good bands, right? So to be yeah, yeah. to make finals, that says a lot. And I think that's due to your guys' style difference. Like you guys have, like I said, a, a super unique style that you don't really hear that often. Like it's you usually hear the the heaviness with straight screams. But to have that, I almost want to say architects, like you hit the same thing that Sam does, where he's like at these high cleans, but they're almost a scream. And you're like, just on the verge of it. And it's super cool because you, you don't usually hear that. And it, I think that's what drew me towards you guys was your uniqueness as a group. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, um, it's a really cool, um, lifestyle too to be a part of in europe like the metal scene i guarantee it'd be completely different than here because it's embraced yeah because you guys have that open culture right like black metal has been popular if for how long you know what i mean it, it just got to north america less than like big less than i want to say 15 years ago where it was like besides like you had cradle of filth but they're out of england i believe and demu i can't yeah. remember where demu is from but like oh, you had yeah. Yeah. yeah you had very little death metal and like black metal and goth metal bands coming out but that was like the only thing you would hear from like switzerland sweden finland any northern european country and it's just weird not weird it's it's super cool to see that there's a there's a diversity, but you just never get to hear of it due to the mainstream metal industry is so focused on that genre that comes from your guys' country. You know what I mean? That that's kind of like where they pick their best bands. But in reality, yeah. it's like you open up that pool and it's like, holy shit, they have totally different styles of metal that like you don't even hear. So I think 
I think you guys will like once you start getting back into shows and getting around. I think like your your fan base is just gonna grow so much because of it. And I think after COVID is done and everybody wants more shows, I think the live shows will be wicked again. And there will be a ton of wicked have, like concerts going on and festivals, you maybe new ones, which would be nice. Mm. Yeah, I wait for so. Yeah, hey. If you guys could change anything in the music industry, what do you think it would be? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's kind of hard to say. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe something like that. Labels could, you know, uh, sign bands with that are not like that. Don't all sound the same, you know? Because you know, we got big, big labels like uh, not Napalm Records. What's the other one? The other big, I think it's German. Uh, Nuclear. Sure. Yeah, nuclear. Yes. Nuclear blast. Yeah. 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 It's nuclear blast. Yeah. So they got a, a ton of ton of bands. They all look exactly the same. It's like they're like funneled through, uh, you know, what should I call it? I don't, filter. I don't know. A filter. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. Yeah, you know, a, a trench that filters out all the uniqueness, and they all have the same kind of outfits and the same kind of production and sound, and you know, it's just. I don't know. No, it's, it's just it's, it's super it's super boring. I mean, even even if the even if the bands would have like they even if they sound like they would have like you know if they would have promised you know to be good music, but then mm -hmm. you know the production is is total well overproduced and stuff like that. So I don't yeah, know. It kind of takes I away from. From the scene as a whole, I mean, from music as a whole. No, 100%. Like when you hear your favorite bands that are now putting in like electronic uh, influences, it's like, wow, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> like, <laughs> or like you've got Metallica doing songs with Lady Gaga. It's like, I don't, I don't get it. it just be true to your art and metal itself. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that labels need to stop trying to pick up bands that have already done all the groundwork mm. stop going for bands that have made 130,000 fans themselves off their own hard work because you want to do nothing like mm. they need to start listening to bands that have 600 likes 400 likes because some of those bands are fucking incredible but they're a year old you know what I mean like if you're not going to give them a chance because they don't have 10,000 likes on Facebook Mm -hmm. that doesn't really it's not a popularity contest it does facebook doesn't determine how well a band is it determines yeah they can either pay for ads or they're really good at getting their friends and family to like their stuff <laughs> because in the long run how many of those people come to your shows it's dedicated fans that will like your stuff and that you want and i think record labels and um managers touring managers general managers pr companies i think there's a select few that will go and do the, the work to find the, the new bands. And uh, I think that needs to change because record labels used to send out a dude to, uh, to little venues to go find the new emerging bands and now they don't. They just wait for it to come to them. And once it's once they're polished up and ready, have a finished product, oh, well then we'll sign you. Well, isn't that mm -hmm. your job to finish the product? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I That's definitely true. agree that needs to change because mm -hmm. That or just like we scrap the whole structure we have and just start fresh collectively. All musicians just say, we're going to do this ourselves. Well, a lot of them are doing it themselves too. So, Yeah, for sure. Is there anything you guys want to say before we uh, wrap up? Well, actually, uh, it, was, it was funny that you mentioned the, the electronic <laughs> uh, influences. I guess, well, I don't know if you... You're maybe going to have a su surprise in, in that part, I mean, considering that part you know, on the EP, because actually the opening track is is at least half, I mean, almost fully electronic music. No, that's... Uh, like mix, I, mixed in with, with metal. With, the, with metal, yes. Yeah. Like one of my favorite, like I love EDM, I produce it, mm -hmm. but oh, uh, okay. um, like Sullivan King. 
he, so unique you know what i mean like and dubstep mixed with heavy fucking metal and screams like that's well done i mean more like um in vocal aspects where they have like the super auto tune or like oh, okay, yeah. yeah like things like that where you're like as a vocalist you should be able to hit those notes without having to worry about making it sound so a robotic i guess because i found mm -hmm. there's a lot of bands coming out nowadays even like i love bring me the horizon and architects and even both of them you can hear in their music how auto-tuned and overproduced it is and it mm -hmm. i think that's what i meant by electronic is it, it's it's taking away from the putting a mic in front of an amp and recording mics over a drum kit and recording and actually like screaming and getting that it's i feel the more um electronic we get with our production our like our equipment and stuff that it, it starts to ruin the uh the music versus like yeah or, i mean yeah or or either the music or the i mean the singer's motivation to practice because you you can always rely on auto auto tune yeah I, mean, I, I can speak from experience you know <laughs> so yeah no and it's a uh, i mean we're also in a world where we kind of have to adapt like there is going to yeah, be, true. there is going to be electronic influences in metal because it's in everything, but there's also hip hop influence in metal. So, and I, I can't, I can't hate on that. Cause I, I am one of those screamers, hip hop singing kind of guys. So hmm. it's, we're, we're in a unique time with music. I can't wait to see what the next three years bring when all the music from COVID that's been recorded is finally released and shown. It'll be a cool thing. Well, yeah, sure. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Also, well, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just, uh, I was just gonna say that. Uh, I mean, add to add to your statement that, yeah, that I don't know. I think that the most interesting uh, sounds or styles that bands create. I mean, they are. I don't know. They come from you know these unique mixtures of different kinds of styles, and well, yeah. I don't know. There are like uh, I I could probably mention a ton of bands select that I really enjoy, and I th I've found eventually that the actual reason I enjoy them so much is that they sound so unique because of the because of the you know the combinations they make with totally different styles of music. Yeah, like Sepultura is hands down probably one of the most influential original mm -hmm. bands from their time and they're completely underrated and, yeah that's true you know what i mean like they had this cool brazilian tribal aspect to their music mm -hmm. that no one else had and mm -hmm. everyone yeah, especially on roots bloody roots yeah exactly right and it always kind of makes me laugh when people are like slayer and it's like well mm -hmm. i mean you can't forget about other bands there's tons of other bands that that made metal what it is and uh i mean one of my favorite bands out of vancouver their name's ninja spy and they do like reggae metal, which is probably one of the most unique things I've ever seen, mm -hmm. but they do it so well. So they go from like really sporadic metal into like ska. And it's oh, like, okay. how do you do it? How, so like, it's, so yeah. it's not like, it's, it's not like Skin Dread. No. Oh, no. Okay. They have like, they're, they're super unique. Like um, mm -hmm. it's three brothers that ended up writing music together for years and years. And I, I've known them. I knew them for like a long time. And, uh, the drummer is actually now drums for Michael Graves, um, the former singer of the Misfits. So he's he's worked his way up to to like Glossenberry Festival, and so it's cool to see. But uh, yeah, their style was never heard a band like them in my entire life. They were super unique, and uh, I wish that they they managed to go a little bit longer than and mm -hmm. further in. I think they were way ahead of their time, is what it was. Cool, guys. Well, thanks for coming on. It was nice talking to you. And uh, when you release some music, let me know, because we'll have you back on. Yeah, sure. And thanks yeah, for well, the interview. Oh, yeah, no worries. Thanks. Thank I'll you. definitely talk to you guys again. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Bye. You too. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit that little dicky bell because you don't want to miss out on any of the motherfucking shit we drop in. Right, Norman? Absolutely, Rob.